Well, this is uh, Professor Cummings. I wanted to go ahead and continue a lecture going over strength of materials. And today, for this video, I wanted to go over something called Poisson's Ratio. Now, I want to start off. This is the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. And as many of you probably know, it is a suspension bridge. Now, what that means is that you have a column a series of columns you know here you got one back here and these columns are actually put into the bay and they actually have a, a cable main cables that run between columns and between these columns or between these these cables there is a suspension cable suspension cables that go and they support the road bed so the cables that actually do the suspension are, are under a load. They're under a, a tensile load. And that's what actually supports that road bed. The main columns are under a compressive load. Because this is pushing down, they're being held down and they're being compressed under, you know, from the bedrock all the way from the top. So these are under compressive load. Compressive load here, tensile load here. And the load on the cables themselves, the main part we want to talk about is caused by that road bed. So here we have the actual load. The load is, is here under from this road bed. And then you can see that road will, that bed will fluctuate some depending on how heavy the traffic is. There's, there's a constant load just from the bed itself. And depending on what's going on on that road, you know, that load can actually start to increase. Now, you know, considering that these things are under a perpetual load, we've actually gone through, you know, what happens when you put a member under load. In particular, a tensile load is you end up with a stress and a strain. Now, the stress is just the internal resistance to that load, and you can calculate that stress with the actual uh, the load over the area. So the load over the area is what gets you your, your stress. And that is stress is called by a sigma. And then you've got something called a strain. Now what the strain is is just the change in the length versus the original length of the cable. And that's what we, I want to really focus on today. So you've got the strain that those cables are under. They actually have a original length that the cable has. And then due to the load, there's going to be a change in the length. And that is what gives us a strain. So again, I just changed this picture a little bit. So here we have, you know, the strain, which is just a change in length of the original length, and we've got our bridge. Now, now I want to introduce a, another concept called Poisson's ratio. Now, what Poisson's ratio is is it takes into account this strain, but it looks at it a little more uh, comprehensively. We look at a little more, a little bit added to it. So in this case, you've got your cable, and you just say this is the outside, you know, the side view of the cable, and you've got a, a length that you're dealing with on this cable, you know, from here to here. So you got a length, an original length, L, the original length. And you've got a cross-section view of the cable. Okay, so this is the original cross-section. So it's got a certain diameter to it. So just, that, you know, that it has. And this is when it's got no load on it. And if we were to put a load to that, you know, apply a tensile load, you can see that this whole cable will change in length. You'll end up with a delta in the length, right? So you've got a length and you've got a delta length and we can use that to calculate the original length. But something else is going on here with this cable. Not only did it stretch, you know, have a delta L, have a delta L, it also contracted. You can see we've got an original diameter that actually shrunk down, you know, so that this we've got a new diameter here. And this lighter section represents our new diameter because as this cable got longer, it actually got smaller and, and uh, crossways or laterally. And that's just due to the conservation of matter. You know, it's the same amount of material that's just been redistributed due to this stretching, which again is fine because if you look at the stress strain diagram, what we're talking about here, this is all going on within the elastic limit or the hooks limit. So it's still in the proportional limit of how this goes. So we know this cable is going to come back once the load has been taken away. But what we can see here is that this load 
you know, has a, there is a lateral change. And you can look at that lateral change the same way you look at the strain originally, or this strain long, longitudinally. So there's a strain longitudinal, which is the change in the length over the original length, and then there's a, strange, a strain laterally, which is just the original lateral diameter, or original diameter over the new diameter. Now one thing I want you to keep in mind is that this longitudinal change actually was an addition. It was a positive. You added more length to it. The lateral change is a negative. So you're going to get that as negative. Think of that as, as positive. You're getting more here. You're contracting it. This diameter is actually less than the original diameter. Okay, so you've got a lateral strain and a longitudinal strain, you know, by this definition of strain. Now let's look at going in a different type of direction. So we, let's say you've got another member, and this came up, you know, a little prematurely, but it's fine. So you've got a, a member, let's say you just a, a another round member, but now you've got it under compressive load. So what's going to happen with this? Well, you're going to end up with a different type of strain. But still it's going to be a strain, but it's going to be a strain in the other direction. So if we've got a compressive load, what we end up with is the longitudinal strain is going to make this member shorter. We're putting a load, you know, across uh, axially and longitudinally it contracts in that direction. And you can see that as it also contracts in one direction, conservation of mass again kicks in and we end up going whoops, end up expanding in this direction. So laterally we get larger. So unlike this example in tensile, our longitudinal strain is negative and our lateral strain is positive. Now that's important because it gets us to this concept of Poisson's ratio. There's two things about Poisson's ratio I want you to be mindful of. One, you know, we're still operating in, in the, the elastic limit. As so long as we're within that elastic limit, we'll always come back to our original uh, state. So we're, we're not in fear of failing. Another thing to keep in mind with uh, Poisson's ratio is that depending on the type of material that we're dealing with, we can actually expect that this ratio between the longitudinal and lateral strains to be consistent. You know, if, if this is uh, aluminum, or if this is concrete, if this is rubber, if this is steel, the ratio of, you know, so long as we're within that la elastic limit, will be consistent. And this is the formula for Poisson's ratio. It's a very predictable uh, ratio so long as we stay within the elastic limit. And the Poisson's ratio is simply saying that the strain laterally versus the strain longitudinally is going to be a consistent ratio. And this negative sign here is just a correction factor. It goes back to the fact that when we're under compression, we're dealing with a negative change versus a positive change. And when we're in tensile, we're looking at a positive longitudinal strain versus a negative lateral change. So we have this correction factor that basically just uh, eliminates the negative sign in the equation. So the value of Poisson's ratio, represented by nu, the Greek letter nu, is going to be consistent based on the material. And, you know, this has been a, a lot of research with civil engineering and mechanical engineering and other types of disciplines that have gone through and saw that it found that, you know, different materials have a very consistent ratio between the uh, lateral strain and the longitudinal strain. This is Professor Cummings again. We'll get into a little bit more when it comes to strength of materials, but that's, you know, Poisson's ratio.